Football is more than a game. It's a passion, a love, a dedication with just a ball and desire. It brings us together from Thursday night till Monday night under the lights on the gridiron. A sport that brings people together from the small towns on Friday nights to the colleges on Saturdays and the big cities and everyone in between on Sundays. The game of football unites us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation in College Hall of Fame welcomes you to this special presentation of the 2021 Minnesota Football Honors Awards event presented by the Minnesota Vikings. Hi, I'm Angie Avestris, and on behalf of the National Football Foundation, welcome to the Minnesota Football Honors presented by the Minnesota Vikings. I'm joined by the president of the Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation, Todd Fultz. Hi Angie, thanks again for being here this year. My pleasure, I mean it has been a challenging year I'm sure to pull off this event. It has been, it's been challenging for everybody in all walks of life to deal with the COVID and everything that's come with it. Uh, but for us we decided it was very important to stay focused and make sure that we honor these kids who have done such a great job in their careers and give them a chance to be recognized. Now I know a lot of the other chapters around the country weren't able to pull off events last year or this year, so how are you able to do it? You know, we have a great board of directors. We've got incredible staff and a lot of high school and college coaches around the state that help uh, present these uh, potential award winners to us. And we've got a lot of great sponsors on board this year as well. Absolutely, the Minnesota Vikings who've been a partner with ours for a long time, along with a number of other great sponsors, and we're just very grateful that they're willing to contribute so that we can honor these student athletes. And speaking of the Minnesota Vikings, we're at the Omni Hotel right now. We have the practice facility behind us, Viking Lakes, beautiful area. How cool is this for the kids to come out here? This is great, and they've been talking about it all day, how neat of an opportunity it was to come out and see this facility and be part of it and we're really grateful to be around such a high class first class type of uh, environment and we've got a lot of student athletes to recognize in the show tonight should we get things kicked off i think we should get started garrison soliday was a versatile player in saint thomas academy's defense he earned three time all district and two time all state and all metro honors and was also twice named district defensive player of the year and a mr football finalist Garrison continues to impact his community by coaching new sports, volunteering at his church, and participating in Feed My Starving Children activities. Additionally, following the George Floyd events in Minneapolis, Soliday immediately organized a large food drive. His actions made a difference in the lives of many people in South Minneapolis. Hi, my name is Garrison Soliday, and I am a 2021 Minnesota Scholar Athlete. Over the past couple of years, you know, there's a lot of people who have helped me on my journey and a lot of people I'd like to thank, but some very notable ones would be my dad, of course, and my mom for everything they've done for me, all the sacrifices they've made for me, as well as Coach Dan O'Brien, he's done a lot for me. Um, as well as my sophomore year, the whole senior class, you know, I was the only sophomore on varsity, but they kind of showed me, a lot of them showed me what it is to work hard and be a good team leader and help lead the team. The game of football has taught me how to work hard, how to lead, how to not get discouraged in the face of adversity, whether that's injuries or people weighing you down or haters or whatever. It's taught me how to deal with a lot of life lessons through what to most would be seen as a game, but it, it's definitely taught me a lot. Sam Valor was an electric running back for the Monticello Magic Football Program. In 2020, he was named the district's most valuable running back. On the other side of the ball, he also grabbed three interceptions while playing safety for the Magic. His excellent football accomplishments earned him first team all district and second team Star Tribune all Metro defensive back honors in 2020. He coached youth sports, volunteered at Feed My Starving Children, and assisted with a variety of local events. 
Hi, I'm Sam Valor. I go to Monticello High School and I'm a 2021 Minnesota Scholar Athlete. I think what makes football such a great sport is the team aspect of it. No matter how good you are, you can't win a football game alone. And a lot of people say it's like a chess match, so there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made. And you just need to trust your teammates that they'll do what you, they're expected to do and you do what you're expected to do. And that's how the team has the best chance to win. The game of football is, takes a lot of discipline during the season and in the off season to get to where I want to be um, individually and for my team. As someone that stuck out in my high school football career is head coach Jason Telecki and really just for being someone that is there to, in the back of my mind that you always want to impress, kind of like your parents, you know, it's someone that you want to do the right thing knowing that it'll make them proud. A moment that stands out to me um, over the last few years was this past season where we played the number two ranked team in the state, Owatonna, and beat them uh, seven to six in a game that came down to the last play. Next fall, I'll be going to play football at Davidson College in North Carolina, and I'm thinking about studying economics. Today's show is sponsored by the Minnesota Vikings. Coming up, we'll announce our next scholar-athlete. Aiden Kingsbury is one of the best offensive linemen in the Twin Cities. This 6'7", 305-pound player played multiple positions for Concordia Academy's program and his versatility and leadership made a positive impact on all of his teammates and coaches. In the classroom, Kingsbury posted a 4.33 GPA and was on the school's honor roll every year. Additionally, Kingsbury was a math tutor for young students in his school, playing a major role in shaping the lives of young people at Concordia Academy. Hi, I'm Aiden Kingsbury. I go to Concordia Academy and I'm a 2021 Minnesota Scholar Athlete. I was very honored to receive this award, and it just felt like a uh, nice pinnacle of my high school experience, both pursuing academic ex excellence and also uh, pursuing greatness on the football field. Football is a great sport because it has a different position for everyone. It's also taught me a lot of life lessons, such as facing adversity and being able to work towards a common goal with the team. When I'm thinking about people who influenced me in my uh, high school football career, I definitely think of my coaches and my teammates as they both encouraged me to become better and help me uh, exercise my leadership abilities as I encourage them to grow on their skills as well. I would definitely say the highlight of my high school career would be my junior year. We played St. Agnes, who was our rivals, but we ended up beating them at their homecoming in a very close game, so that was definitely a uh, highlight of my career. Next fall, I'm excited to be attending Princeton University, um, playing football, and my major is currently undecided. Adam Tonsfeld was a star quarterback and safety for the Barnesville Trojans football program. He posted a 30-4 and career record and led his team to a state championship and semifinal. Tonsfeld was recognized as a three-time all-district, all-section, and all-academic selection. Tonsfeld posted a 3.9 GPA and earned academic all-state honors for his outstanding academic accomplishments. Off the field, Adam is actively involved in his community. He volunteers at the local food shelf, helps with youth sports camps, and buys Christmas gifts for deserving families in the area. I'm Adam Tonsfeld, I'm from Barnesville High School. I played quarterback and strong safety, and next year I plan on attending Concordia College for business. Definitely right away I'd like to thank my entire coaching staff. They do an incredible job down there in Barnesville. I think it's one reason why we've had such great success as a team, so I gotta give a lot of credit to them. I gotta say one lesson that really has taught me is teamwork, and another one is leadership. You know, working as a team, figuring out how to get individuals involved, you know, whether they're on the field, they're off the field, making sure everyone feels like they're a part of the team. One thing I love to do is work with the little younger kids in our community. I love putting on football camps, you know, during the summer, different things like that, getting them involved, just kind of showing them, you know, what it means to be a Trojan football player, what it means to be an athlete. I'm just making sure they know it's, you know, more than just football, you know, being a part of the community, being a great person, being a great um, in academics, and just that's what we like to push on them, I guess. Eli Fest, a quarterback for the Huron Lake Okabina Coyotes, was named an All-State Honorable Mention selection. He also made the All-District team three times during his high school career. Fest is heavily involved in every aspect of his school district. His outstanding work in the classroom earned him All-State academic honors. Fest was also named a Gold Honorable selection for maintaining a 3.71 plus GPA. In the community, he works as a youth sports referee, helps with Vacation Bible School, and participates in 4-H activities. 
Hi, I'm Eli Fesch and I'm from Heron Lake, Okabina, Folda and I am a 2021 Scholar Athlete Award winner. The most important people in my life and my football career are my brothers, my dad, and my coaches. Growing up, my brothers were always somebody I looked up to and they, they're six or seven years older than me and so I always chased after them to be right where they were and I always had to be better than all my classmates so I could play with them. And then my dad, growing up, I always wanted to be like him. He played college football, so I was always like, I want to be that. And he always pushed me. And then my coaches always told me, go get it, and they pushed me to be great. The best moment in high school for me was probably our last game. We knew it was going to be our last game. It was our playoff game against Edgerton. And we actually got down 24 nothing. And then we ended up coming all the way back and we won, I think the final score was 36 to 32. Next year, I plan to go to Bethany Lutheran and I'm gonna play basketball there. Today's show is sponsored by TCF Bank. Stay tuned for our next Scholar Athlete. Ryan Wilson was a star linebacker and running back for the Elk River Elks. The three-year starter earned all district honors for his excellent play on the field. Wilson, a team captain, became a key leader on both sides of the ball. Ryan posted a 4.011 GPA and was elected to the National Honor Society. His outstanding academic performance earned him the Spotlight in Academics Award and Elk River Football's Academic Scholarship. He frequently volunteers with youth programs and is the school's Fellowship for Christian Athletes leader. Hi, I'm Ryan Wilson. I'm from Elk River and I'm a scholar athlete. When I found out that I was named a scholar athlete, it, it definitely meant a lot to me. Just a lot of late nights, early mornings paying off, a lot of hard work that went into getting this award. I'd say the one person that really helped me throughout my football career and just growing up in general is my older brother, Jack. It really helps to just have a role model that I could always look up to. He was always there for me, so really appreciate him. One thing I always remember from my high school career is playing Rogers my junior year of high school football. They're a crosstown rival. We were just coming off a loss to them, so this was the playoffs now. And you could just feel the electricity in the stadium. Uh, every big play, the crowd was roaring, so that was a ton of fun. I'll remember that forever. I'm still undecided on a school, but I'm going to major in kinesiology or exercise science and then eventually get my doctorate in physical therapy. Ryland Banky was a star center and middle linebacker for Murray County Central High School. During his career, he earned two-time All-District honors. Banky was twice named to the Worthington Globe All-Area First Team. In the classroom, Banky qualified for the academic All-State Team and was named to the Minnesota Honor Society. Banky made a mark on his local community through a variety of activities. Most notably, he worked as a Sunday school teacher and youth sports volunteer. Ryan Banky, Murray County Central. I'm a Minnesota Scholar Athlete. When I heard that I was receiving this award, I was a little surprised to begin with, but you know, it's just... It's a great testament to the people that have been around me and that have helped me get to this point and the leadership that I've been around and the people that have influences who I am now. Football is an amazing sport because it brings people from all walks of life together and it just implies different lessons that not only are applicable to football but to the rest of your life as a whole and it's something that you can take not only through your four years of high school or four years of college but to the rest of your life no matter where you end up going. Nick Marinero was a disruptive defensive lineman in Benilde St. Margaret's scheme. He earned the district's Defensive Lineman of the Year Award and finished fourth in tackles for loss. On the other side of the ball, his run blocking paved the way for two of the most explosive running backs in the area. Marinero was also named to the highest academic honor roll and became a member of the National Honor Society. Additionally, he served as a four-year member on the school's student council. Off the field, he landscaped for elderly members of his community and was a link crew leader. Hi, I'm Nick Marinero from Benilde St. Margaret's and I am a 2021 Minnesota Scholar Athlete. Somebody who should definitely be thanked for my progression, uh, both as a player and a person, was my head coach, Coach John Hanks. I think he just demanded the best out of everybody. He had high expectations, but that really contributed to our growth as both players and off the field. So I think football is the ultimate team sport. Um, you really need everybody to come together, um, whether it's, you know, all different types of backgrounds, you know, different races, religions. Um, it, it's a sport that demands everybody to come together if you want to succeed. One of the most special moments of my career in high school was definitely when we beat Holy Angels in the conference semifinal um, my junior year. 
we just had a really special group of guys that year and it was it was a really big win and we won by about 40 so that was pretty exciting for sure. I'm going to Dartmouth College both to play football and attend school so I'm, I'm really excited about it pretty fired up and can't wait to get started. Congratulations to all of our scholar athletes. The Minnesota Football Honors is proud to recognize the following players who received our Scholar Athlete Honorable Mention Award. Coming up next, the Stacy Robinson Leadership Award winner. Godmar Gotch was a star offensive and defensive lineman for the Worthington Trojans. The team captain not only impacted his teammates, but made a difference in his local community. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Gotch volunteered to deliver food through the Meals on Wheels program. He paid for his own gas and delivered four meals a week to people who needed it most. Gotch also assists the local food pantry and helps with local spring cleanup. Whether he is teaching his teammates a new drill or leading a community activity, Gotch's giving spirit leaves a lasting mark on others. Hi, my name is Godmar Gotch and I'm a Stacy Robinson Leadership Award winner. Being a leader means to me that you're always around helping guys out when they need it and you're putting in extra effort to help people out and you're thinking about more people than just yourself. The style I take to approaching my team members, um, I'm more of a vocal guy, so I'll just go up to guys and tell them, hey, this needs to be done, and then that's how I go about it. When I found out that I was receiving the award, I was very excited, I was shocked. I didn't believe it at first and it's really an honor. When I look back on the season, we didn't know if we were gonna play or not right away because of Corona and stuff like that. So just keeping the guys in the weight room and stuff like that was good and it made an impact in the end. When COVID hit, some things I did to volunteer and help out was we had uh, Meals on Wheels in our town, which is we'd go out and prepare meals and deliver it to the elderly and people in need. And we also do a food pantry every other Thursday where we uh, unload a truck and stock the shows and then people come through and grab what they need. Um, this is really important to me because everybody needs help once in a while, so if I have the free time not doing anything, I might as well go out and help other people. I'm going to continue to play football at Hamlin University and study psychology. Demetrius Say started his football career by playing junior varsity and varsity special teams. By the time he was a senior, Say became a standout running back and defensive end for the Minneapolis South Tigers. His outstanding play on the field earned him all district honors. He showed the younger players how to practice hard, how to accept responsibility, how to reject passivity, and how to remain humble, said Minneapolis South head coach Rodney Lasso. With COVID-19, community opportunities were few, but the football family and community at South High School will be talking about the transformation of Demetrius for years to come. Hi, my name is Demetrius Say. I am a Stacey Robinson Leadership Award winner. In my words, a leader is somebody who is willing to learn from their mistakes and willing to fight for what they believe in. When I found out I was one of the winners, I just couldn't believe it. It was like all the time that I worked throughout my high school, it finally played off and I was just so excited and I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. Sport of football, man, means everything. Like it's something that I love to do. Like I grind it and it's just, experience for me. It was just always been a fun experience. Football taught me a lot of discipline and it taught me you're not going to earn anything without working hard for it. How I show myself as a leader is more action-wise. I will, the type of person that would go do it, not say too many words, I would just go do it and hope that me doing it will help other people. My senior year where I really knew I was making an impact of my team because Everybody used to just look out for me and like we was just together as a team and they used to follow my advice. I would say, hey, you got to do this and they had fixed the small mistakes. They had listened to me. So my senior year, I really knew I became a leader for South. Next year, I will be attending Wadoff University in Forest City, Iowa. J.D. Akoa was a standout quarterback for the Minnesota State Mavericks football program. His 29 career touchdown passes rank 10th on the program's all-time list. In the classroom, Akoa, a three-time NSIC All-Academic Team of Excellent Selection, and earned the NSIC brand All-Academic with Distinction Award. He was named a William B. Campbell Trophy semifinalist for his outstanding academic 
and community accomplishments. ACOA attended the NCAA Apple Training Institute and volunteered in the Mayo Clinic's oncology department. The people who have, you know, really stuck with me throughout my whole collegiate career, um, there's a few people. One of them has to be my uh, quarterback's coach, Coach Bashaner. Um, He's done a lot for me on the field and off the field, helping me prepare for, you know, my application for med school, teaching me the, you know, the, the, really the basics and the, the technicalities of playing football and what it really means to be a college football athlete. And then obviously, you know, Coach Hoffner, you know, giving me the opportunity to come and play and to be able to showcase my skills. And then player-wise, I mean, it's hard to pick a choose because they're all such a great group of guys. You know, I had to say I look up to Ryan Schlichty, who was a quarterback that I was playing with. I learned a lot from him and he was able to teach me a lot. You know, and I I just really respected the way that he played the game and the way that he, uh, you know, managed the game and, you know, led the team. So those are really three people that I can definitely appreciate, you know, throughout my career. The number one thing is teamwork, you know, especially once you get onto the workforce and you're in that work setting. A lot of it is team based and, you know, you have to be able to work well with the team and you have to have a goal in mind and you have to be willing to sacrifice in order to achieve that goal and you have to you know have that drive and so football you know really taught me those important things of you know being dedicated and being consistent and to you know make sure that you're able to work with the team and understand where other people are coming from and you know just try to be the best it makes you the best person you could be you know, basically definitely the national championship that was definitely one of the, you know, best experiences that I've had in college. Um, you know, the send off and while, you know, when we arrived and the game itself was definitely something that um, I appreciated fullest extent. Demanding and then also being in school and, you know, the major that I was in was also very time demanding. And so um, being able to balance those and receive this award and, you know, being recognized for the hard work and dedication is you know, very exciting and it's, it's awesome. So thank you for the award. So as of right now, the plan is to defer my matriculation for med school instead of going in 2021 to go into 2022 to go back and finish off that last year of eligibility just because I didn't get my senior year and it was something that every college athlete looks forward to. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm, that's, that's where I'm leaning right now, or that's what I'm going to do. Today's show is sponsored by the NFL Alumni Association, Minnesota Chapter. Tune in for the Bobby Bell College Impact Player of the Year. The Minnesota Chapter of the National Football Foundation is proud to recognize Bob Stein and E.J. Henderson as new members of the College Football Hall of Fame. This season, Gophers running back Mohamed Ibrahim was named the 2020 Big Ten Running Back of the Year and set Minnesota's school record for rushing yardage per game. Additionally, he tied the Gophers program record for consecutive 200-yard rushing performances. Ibrahim scored eight total touchdowns over a two-game span, which is also a school record. After his outstanding 2020 season, Ibrahim was recognized as an All-Big Ten First Team and Associated Press Third Team All-American selection. Cap George did not let brain cancer stand in his way. He remained connected with one of his biggest passions, football. The game brought his friends, family, and community together every Friday night. While facing difficult battles, Cap felt the support of everyone through Rosemont High School's Cap Strong campaign. Cap and his family's story shows us the powerful impact football can have on the lives of others. Cap's legacy continues to inspire people in the Rosemont community. The George family has launched the Cap Strong Corporation, a nonprofit designed to keep Cap's love of people and his community alive through acts of kindness, scholarships, and donations to various causes. This spring, the Rosemount National Honor Society created an initiative called 13 Acts for Cap. For 13 consecutive days, students encouraged the Rosemount community to take part in random acts of kindness. The Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation is pleased to announce the late Cap George with the Minnesota Football Honors Courage Award. The awards that Cap has been given and and how we how we feel about them is, you know, I guess the the part that our family feels all the time is this great 
joy that he's given to the world that, that people would want to give him an award back. It just reflects so much that what we, we gave and helped with Cap and all his friends built with him and all those qualities he, he took in, he reflected that back to the world. So I think my favorite part in just these awards and this type of thing happening is just that we're seeing a reflection of what he gave. And that's just so, so heartwarming to know that, that things are given back to him and it's a reflection of, of, his, of his spirit and a continuing reflection of his spirit. I think that's one of the biggest things. I think one um, neat thing after his passing is people would come up to us, which was really nice. They would share stories that we had no idea. And one of my favorites was at uh, a youth football game, Cap was there watching his younger brothers. And a dad saw this kid playing catch with some younger kids and um, the kid was especially including um, a younger boy with disabilities. And the dad asked his older son at the time, who was that that was including and playing with his younger kids? And he said, oh, that's Cap. And that was Cap. He was inclusive and always reached out to everyone. Um, but I hadn't heard that story, so it was neat. I, mean, I knew it, it didn't surprise me, but it was special to hear that. There's many great football moments we've cherished with Cap, and, and the one that stands out the most is he came from a, a, a practice or a game, and he had his black uh, face paint on and just his football pants and a tight, you know, tight football undershirt, and Cooper made a play, and uh, Cap was right there saying, you know, Cooper, juke him out, juke him out. And uh, Cooper made the move, and Cap was running side by side in the sideline and I caught it out the side of the uh, of the video frame and at the time I didn't know how special it was I just thought it was a real fun moment and to have that moment where I saw him running down the sideline with his brother and he was he, he was he was the biggest fan of his brother and brothers and to have him do that at that moment um, and have that memory and that video it's probably it's it's Going up there is it's the top, it's yeah. my top what I can remember, but it's definitely a top the top memory of yeah. in football. Do you have one? He was everyone's biggest cheerleader. He yeah. really was. Yeah, and it was just it wasn't just his brother. It was, it was it was his his, his buddies. He would stay there the whole game, being engaged, mm -hmm. and he would be cheering just at the edge of his feet and at the edge of the sideline, wanting to just be out there with them and cheering them on. That's that's probably my favorite memory now. It's not the football play. It's the spirit he added to the game. That's probably my favorite. My pride is abundant. I'm so proud of the person he was. I'm proud of the friend he was in the big brother. He had love and positivity for everyone. It didn't matter their age, their race, their gender. He reached out to every single person and he wanted to have a conversation with you. And I'm, I'm very proud. And I'm proud that, that what he gave the world is giving back now and, the, and people are seeing that and we're just, we just hope we can keep giving in his name like he kept giving us and giving everything else. I guess that's, our, that's probably our biggest mission, one of the biggest missions in life of Cap Strong and all of just everything we're trying to do with his name is to keep giving and giving and giving and just trying to be world class, world -class givers. Today's show is sponsored by Polaris. Stay tuned for this year's Sid Hartman Award winner. The Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation is pleased to announce WCCO Radio's Dave Lee as the 2020 recipient of the Sid Hartman Media Award. During his 32-year career at WCCO Radio, Lee has left a lasting mark on the Minnesota football community. He was the Minnesota Golden Gophers football play-by-play -play announcer for a decade and currently calls the games at the University of St. Thomas. Lee's voice is also synonymous with Minnesota State football and basketball broadcasts. His love for sports broadcasting continues to touch the lives of others. As a WCCO morning show host for more than 32 years, Lee has connected fans with Minnesota football. His thoughtful interviews amplify the game to every corner of the state. 
Lee, a six-time Minnesota Sportscaster of the Year and three-time Emmy winner, is one of the most accomplished radio broadcasters in the Twin Cities market. Not to mention, he has made a tremendous impact through many community projects, including an awareness and fundraising campaign for the University of Minnesota Masonic Children's Hospital. I'm Dave Lee. I'm the Sid Hartman winner for the Minnesota Football Honors. It got started as a freshman in college when I needed a job, obviously, to pay for school. And as I examined things I'd like to do, I thought, you know, I'm going to give a shot to broadcasting. There was a small radio station that needed some help, and I ended up doing a lot of play-by-play, -play, and they let me come right out of the chute with, <laughs> with no experience and gave me an opportunity to grow. Go for football story is very interesting. I remember the, uh, the iconic Ray Christensen, the legend, coming to me one day and saying, uh, Dave, I'm going to go one more year and then you can take over. And I'm thinking, I, d I didn't know I was going to take over. I, don't, I didn't apply for the job. I, Ray was such a good friend. He'd walk by the studio when I was on the air. I'd make him come in and talk with me about the last go for football game. He was a wonderful human being, by the way. So then he said that to me, and that's when I first started thinking about go for football. So I did take over when Ray retired. And on that first game in the new TCF Bank Stadium, I remember that, we asked Ray to join us in the booth, and he did the game with us, and uh, he made some of the calls. He was a gentleman, he was a wonderful person, and uh, I had an opportunity to start doing go for football for a decade, and it was, uh, it was a pretty special time. The station changed gears, and uh, suddenly uh, we had the opportunity to do Mayak football in St. Thomas, and I'd done a playoff game before, which I really enjoyed. I can't say I knew a ton about the Mayak, except that I followed it as, as closely as I could, but I wasn't ingrained into it. And that first year, uh, after about three or four games, I'm just shaking my head and going, this is awesome. The talent level, obviously, in Minnesota football has become so impressive. And in the Mayak, you can see it. But the coaching and the innovation and the camaraderie. And then, you know, if you go to St. John's, man, you're always a Johnny. If you're a Tommy, you're always a Tommy, and you've got that rivalry going even when you're retired. And in some cases, there's a wonderful story that Mark Dienard tells about a former coach uh, on his deathbed, and what's the last thing he brought up? The St. John's, St. Thomas game. And it, but it's not just those schools. It's Gustavus, it's, it's Augsburg, it's all of them, and it was a fantastic experience, and I love making the calls. The one thing about the Mayak, you better be on your toes because each play can be different, and when I talk innovation from the coaches, they're, they're pulling everything they can and great ideas. And as a play-by-play -play guy, you can't turn away because there could be something new happening. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, that was a great experience. Mayak, wonderful. Still is. For 32 years, Sid Harmon and I worked together. Some days were special. Other days were not so special. And anybody that knows Sidney knows exactly what I'm saying. He was the hardest working guy I have ever been with. Right up until he hit 100, he just wanted the scoop. He wanted to know what's going on. If you knew something, he didn't get ready because he was going to get it out of you. In my world, he was very, very important. And I don't know how many people know him, but I, I'd have to say I knew him really, really well. And I'm glad I did. And I would love to see his face tonight when he sees this award in my arms. I think right away he'd look and say, what were they thinking? And then if we got to be one-on-one, -on -one, he'd say, you deserve it. And he was really a great, uh, a great, great friend most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I am proud to be holding this award in honor of my buddy, Sid Hartman. Hi, I'm Doug Nelson. I'm the athletic trainer at Burnsville High School, and I'm the Fred Zamberletti winner. I was very proud of it because I, I actually went and looked at all the previous winners, and I knew every one of them. And to be in that circle of friends is a special honor to be admitted into. Yeah, I got to meet Fred uh, when I worked for the Minnesota Twins and actually was out visiting one day and uh, Fred asked me to demonstrate how we stretch our pitchers for baseball for them to do uh, quarterbacks. And so it was an honor to get to meet Fred, who, a person who I've known and I've looked up to for a long time. Um, Fred's kind of our, one of our founding fathers of athletic training here in Minnesota. Well, actually, I was going to be a teacher, and my senior year in college, my basketball coach at Augsburg asked me to be his athletic trainer. And so that kind of set me on my path at that point. I really enjoyed working with the athletes. I had been a basketball player and a soccer player in high school, 
and I enjoyed being, the activity with um, being around teams. And so um, I became the athletic trainer at Augsburg and was there for 15 years, then moved on to the Minnesota Twins for 10 years. And now this is my 35th year, I believe, at the high school level. Definitely with COVID, it's changed a lot of our profession. A lot more cleaning and sanitizing things, um, procedures, wearing the masks, things like that. Then the other side is you don't know day to day if you're going to have a game or not because all of a sudden somebody's exposed and now your team has to quarantine. So it's always changing and something we just have to learn to be flexible and adjust to. I really enjoy working with the kids and that's my passion is to help them understand their injuries, understand how we're going to get them back to the level they were at before and do that safely for them. Today's show is sponsored by the Minnesota Football Coaches Association. Coming up, we'll announce the winner of the John Gallardi Legacy Award. Coach Ross Forchi is the all-time winningest coach in Minnesota State University Moorhead football history. Over 23 seasons, he led the Dragons to a 152-80-4 overall record, including seven postseason appearances and nine conference championships. His 1981 team went undefeated in the regular season and finished number one in the year's final poll. During Forchi's coaching career, 13 former players extended their careers by signing professional football contracts. In 1983, Forchi also launched the NSIC Metrodome Football Classic, which has been a showcase for NSIC football for 20 years. Forchi served as president of the NAIA Football Coaches Association. Forchi is a member of the NAIA Football Coaches Hall of Fame, MSUM Athletic Hall of Fame, NSIC Hall of Fame, North Dakota State Athletic Hall of Fame, and the Minnesota High School Football Coaches Hall of Fame. Sure, I, I coached uh, two years at Melrose in the early 60s, and I would go over and watch some practice, and I watched a few games and got to meet John and, and uh, Later on, when I was an assistant at Warren State, we scrimmaged him and we traded some films with him and, and so on. So uh, we were not real close friends, but we were good acquaintances. And I really appreciate the award in his name. He was a very good coach. Well, I, I coached there for 23 years as head coach and I had nine conference champions. And so those would be all favorite teams and so on. But some teams stand out a little bit more than others. And the, the 1981 team uh, was, uh, had 10 wins and went into the national playoffs. And we got into the, uh, against Pittsburgh State, we got beat in the first round 14 to 13, but they went on and won the national championship. And we, we just about beat them. We were heading the fourth quarter. So that, that'd be one team. And then the uh, 88 team, uh, was rated number one in the nation at the end of the season. And uh, we won our first game and got beaten the second day, game down in central Arkansas. And uh, so it, it, uh, that's a, a team that I remember a lot of. And then the 91 team uh, was uh, a very good team and, and won the conference championship and won the first round of the national playoffs and got beaten the second round. Uh, but we just didn't quite have the, the depth and, that some of the other schools have that have complete scholarship programs. Stu asked me about the uh, players and so on. And uh, we, we have about 40 players in the Moorhead State Hall of Fame that, that played for me and about 30 more that are, should go in in the next few years. And so uh, my, my, uh, thoughts about them and watching them in their careers as they graduated from college has been a, a real joy for me and, and helping them get into the Hall of Fame is, is a, an additional joy. So I, I enjoy that very much. The Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation is pleased to announce Randall and Marianne McDaniel as this year's recipients of the Bud Grant Distinguished Minnesotan Award. Minnesota great Randall McDaniel has always used his platform to make a difference. McDaniel and his wife, Marianne, have teamed up with Open Arms Home for Children to provide love and security to South African children orphaned by the AIDS pandemic. The nonprofit organization places six to eight children in cottages with a permanent house mother or father. 
The children go to preschool on their property and eventually attend elementary, high school, and college in the larger community. Randall and Marianne also give back through Team McDaniel. This volunteer program is designed to promote the idea of community service among young people. Randall and Marianne aim to help kids learn life skills while using their talents to make a difference in the lives of others. Students in 6th through 8th grade volunteer at senior citizens' facilities, hunger organizations, elementary schools, and community centers located primarily within the Robbinsdale School District. Randall and Marianne's love for education and youth development has spread throughout the Twin Cities. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite an honor, I mean, and especially being named for Bud Grant. I mean, uh, the things that he did for the Minnesota, the things he did in the community, the things that he stands for, um, it, is, um, it, it is such an honor to be able to receive this award. It's humbling, but um, I do appreciate having this opportunity. So Team McDaniel is, is a community-based program for middle schoolers uh, based in the Robbinsdale School District where I work at. It's about getting back, giving to the community getting kids to go out and volunteer like in food organizations, assisted living for seniors, community service events like winter carnivals and things like that, bike rodeos, and then also volunteer back at the schools where the younger kids can see these older kids coming out and mentoring them. The things that my wife and I really enjoy mostly about it is watching these young kids grow as they're in it. I mean, a lot of it is when you're, when you're working in the assisted living and by us volunteering in the St. Teresa's and, and places like that, they form that bond, that connection, where the kids are like, oh, they're just older, but they remind me of my grandmother, they remind me of someone in my family, and they love doing that. Um, so I love seeing the kids grow in that way. I mean, I love it when we're out in an event in the community and the kids have to interact with the public. Uh, as you know, middle schoolers and high schoolers are, I mean, heads down on the phone uh, to actually have to talk to the people, to make change, to do something with the community. Well, Open Arms for Children is in South Africa. I grew up with my friend Sally Solis. They came to us one day, wanted to make a difference. Their family always took a trip to South Africa, or they did it somewhere. And while they were in South Africa, they saw the kids that were left orphaned by the AIDS epidemic. And God, you're talking about doing something, they went big. I mean, second mortgage on the house, emptied out their savings account, did the whole thing. Bought 450 acres over in, in South Africa and started out with two kids when they finally got the orphanage up and running, now up to 58 kids. Because of Bob and Sally wanting to make a difference in those kids' lives, and me knowing them, it was like, what can we do to help? And so for the last 15 years since they've been running Open Arms Home for Kids, we've been involved doing whatever we can to help out along the way. And it's, I mean, it's because of them that we're involved with it. Hey everybody, it's Dalvin Cook, Dalvin the Chef Cook. I'm um, just coming here to thank everybody, you know, for for making me the office of MVP better here. Um, um, you know, I just want to first start off by saying, you know, thank you to the Minnesota chapter of the foundation. Thank you to the other award winners before me. Thank you to my teammates, the coaches, my family, and you know, thank you to the whole Vikings organization. You know, this this is special. It means a lot to me. You know, it just shows the hard work that 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 get put in through the off seasons during the season and, you know, I'm just lucky to, to be that guy that, that got selected and it's a lot of hard work to still be done and, you know, we working our tails off and just want to say thank you, everybody. Hey guys, I'm Josh Metellus, safety for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the Minnesota chapter of the National Football Foundation for giving me this opportunity and putting me on the stage. It's a great blessing to be here. You know, I want to thank my family most importantly, my fiance and my son that we just had. That was my motivation a lot throughout the season. My teammates, definitely, I'm a team guy and special teams is definitely something, you know, that is uh, team related. So everybody on special teams helped me get here. You know, I, I wouldn't say I'm the only special teams player. I feel like we had a lot of great special teams players this, this year, but you know, I was just thankful enough to get that title, but you know, it's a blessing. I want to thank my family. I want to thank Coach Zim and uh, Rick Spillman for giving me the opportunity to play for the Minnesota Vikings this past year. And everyone who was um, helping me throughout this past year, I want to thank them too. What's up, everybody? Uh, it's Eric Kendricks. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the uh, Minnesota chapter, the National Football Foundation for um, uh, the award. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't really go out and play football, you know, to, you know, obviously, uh, get these kind of awards, but um, 
it definitely uh, makes me take a step back and appreciate the hard work that I that I have put in. But, you know, also it makes me look forward to the upcoming season and, and, and the work that I still have to put in and experiencing it with a whole new team. You know, every year is a, is a new team. It's a new experience, new feel. It's a new, uh, we have set with new challenges and I'm looking forward to uh, being better than ever. I uh, hope you guys can join me on this ride. And once again, thank you. Uh, shout out to everybody who, who supports me and shout out to the Vikings too. Take care. Well, that about wraps up our show this year. We really hope to all be together at an event next year. But until then, thanks for joining us and thanks for supporting football at all levels. For Todd Fultz, I'm Angie Avestris. We'll see you next time. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors, the Minnesota Vikings, TCF Bank, the NFL Alumni Association, Minnesota Chapter, Polaris, and Minnesota Football Coaches Association.